On today's photo moment, we'll be talking about the difference between shutter angle and shutter speed and why you should care. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking about all kinds of fun things, photo and video related, streaming live to YouTube and today streaming live simultaneously to Facebook as well. We're going to get Twitch in there too. We're going to do all three at once uh, until the internet blows up. So that's at least my plan. I am watching comments on both sides. I won't be able to bring up the Facebook comments on screen here. Um, I really need to figure out a better way to do Facebook comments, but we can bring up, as always, the YouTube comments nice and easily there so you can see what you guys are talking about here. We're going to do a Q&A at the end of the show, as we always do, as we usually do. So if you have any questions, get them on screen. We will address them afterwards. Make sure you put Photo Joseph in front of it so I see it on screen, and I know that that is a question for me. And uh, with that, let's just get into this thing. So we're talking about shutter speed versus shutter angle. Shutter speed and shutter angle are two different ways of talking about the same thing. It's how long your film, your sensor, film, film, I should put air quotes around film, not sensor, uh, are being exposed for. So before we can talk about shutter angle, let's talk about shutter speed and let's make sure that we totally understand what's happening here. So at the most basic, shutter speed is essentially the duration of which the shutter is open and exposing the film or sensor or whatever is behind the shutter. So light's coming in through the lens, light is focused onto the film plane where the sensor or film lives, a shutter opens to expose the film for a set amount of time and then closes again. That duration that it's open can be anything, could be minutes, could be hours, um, usually measured in fractions of a second though, of course, a thirtieth of a second, a sixtieth of a second, a hundredth or a thousandth or a two thousandth of a second, whatever it might be. That shutter opens and closes very, very quickly. The longer it's open, the more light comes in, the more light is exposing the sensor. So in lower light situations, you have a longer shutter speed in general, so you get more light coming in to expose it. Great. This is stuff we all know. What, the way a shutter actually works is it, it, on a mirrored camera, you have a mirror that's in front of the shutter and the film plane that has to flip up. So now we're looking at it from the side. The mirror flips up out of the way, the shutter opens, the sensor is exposed, the shutter closes, and the mirror flaps back down. On a mirrorless camera, there's no mirror in there, so you take that part out of the equation. The shutter opens and closes, but actually in mirrorless, it's a little bit more complicated because the shutter is always open so that you can see what the sensor sees. So the shutter closes, the uh, sensor essentially starts recording, the shutter opens, closes, and it stops recording. That's basically how it works. So that duration is measured in time, a fraction of a second. Again, 60th, uh, 100th, 125th of a second, whatever it might be. If you have a really, really fast shutter speed, Instead of it opening completely and closing, and actually when I'm kind of doing this, but more accurately would be to say, um, if this is the window, the shutter drops down to open and then another one drops down in front of it to close. That's a bit more accurate of how it actually happens. In the case of a really, really, really high shutter speed, on most cameras, that would be two thousandths of a second or above. You get into a shutter that doesn't, uh, doesn't open, let's just do this right, doesn't open and then close like this, it actually, opens and while it's opening, it starts to close and you end up with a slip, a, a slit of light coming through exposing the film or sensor. Uh, we did a whole video on this a while ago on high speed shutter, especially related to flash sync. We'll link to that up here. It was actually a two part video, so we'll link to the first one up here. You can watch the first one and the second one um, and understand how all that works. Okay, so that's basic shutter stuff. That's mechanical shutter. When you're shooting video, you're not doing mechanical shutter. You're doing an electronic shutter. Mechanical shutter in video would require that shutter to open and close 24 or 30 or 60 times per second, which could get a little rough. Um, so instead, it, it does it digitally. So that means the, sensors, uh, the shutter is open the entire time, and the sensor is simply recording on or off, recording or not recording, for the duration that you've set. And if you're shooting stills, forget about video for a second, if you're shooting stills in electronic shutter mode, same thing. The shutter is just completely forgotten about and the sensor is exposed for whatever that short duration of time is. If you get into really high motion, you can get, uh, you can get weird movements actually in your exposure. And ex in electronic shutter mode, when you're in a really high shutter speed, up to like 16 thousandths of a second, whatever some of these crazy cameras do, uh, and you have a lot of motion, you'll see some really crazy weird artifacting. We did a whole video on that. That was a really long time ago, but we'll link to that up here as well. It's a really interesting explanation of electronic shutter versus mechanical shutter and how the scan line works and everything else. We're getting down a rabbit hole here, but it's, it's interesting to understand all of that. So you've got your sensor that is exposed. The shutter either opens and closes to expose it, or the shutter turns on or, and off to expose it. Either way, same end result. We have an exposed, an exposed film plane or sensor. Okay, so that's shutter speed. 
And that is how it effectively works in, uh, in the world of still photography and movie. Again, in movie mode, we don't have the shutter going up and down. We have an electronic shutter. So now, what is shutter angle and how does that relate to it? Well, before we can really understand shutter angle and why it exists, we need to understand what optimal shutter speeds are for shooting video. So now we're talking video mode here. When you're shooting video, you're shooting traditionally either 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 25 if you're PAL. It's, it's one of these pretty fixed frame rates that we shoot at. So if you think, let's, let's just do 30. We'll standardize off of 30 here for this. If you're shooting 30 frames per second, the longest exposure that you can possibly have per frame is a 30th of a second, right? So if you've got one second of time divided into 30 slices for 30 frames of video, the shutter can't be open any longer than the maximum duration of that frame, right? So 30th of a second, that's the most it could possibly be. And if you are shooting 30 frame per second video at a 30th of a second, then you are essentially constantly exposing. You're always exposing. One frame after another, the camera is always recording video. If you shoot it, let's say, at a 60th of a second, so half of that duration, then you are exposing the sensor for half the duration of the frame, half of the time of the frame, and then you're not recording for half of the time, and then you're recording for half the time, not recording for half the time, and so on and so on. And so you end up with 30 frames, each one of which was records, recorded at half of its duration. If it was a 30 frame per second video, then you're recording each one at the 60th of a second. You can actually go longer. You could take a 30 frame per second video and go the other direction and say, let's expose it at a 15th of a second. But then what happens is every other frame is the same, or every two frames are the same, we should say. So frame one and frame two are identical because that 15th of a second duration, let's say if, if this is zero, here's a 30th of a second, here's a uh, 15th of a second. That's one frame, that's another frame. These two frames are identical. So what you end up with is video that looks like it was shot at 15 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second. It's gonna be more stuttery. And of course, it's going to be very smeary because you're gonna have a lot of motion happening in that 15th of a second. So in general, we don't do that. We don't go longer than that maximum duration. So this is an important thing to keep in mind, right? If you're shooting 60 frame per second video, 60p video, the longest shutter speed you can have is a 60th of a second. If you're shooting 30p, the longest you can have is a 30th of a second. If you're shooting 24, the longest you can have is a 24th of a second. Makes sense. But that is not ideal. Ideal is half of the duration. I mentioned half when we were at 30th, going to a 30 frame per second, go to a 60th of a second. Ideal has been defined as half of that duration. And you might think, okay, well, who defined that? It's really, it's a visual thing. What we want to see when we're watching video is we want to see a little bit of motion blur, but not too much and not too little. That little bit of motion blur tells us that it's, it's motion. Things blend together smoothly. The frames smoothly, nicely go together. It just kind of, it flows. We look at the frame and it flows. So if we're shooting at a 30 frame per second timeline, shooting at a 30 frame per second timeline, and we're shooting at a 60th of a second, so again, half of every frame is exposed, uh, duration with half of every frame is exposed, we have motion that our eye sees, our brain sees as nice and smooth and pretty. You can shoot at a much, well, if you shoot at the maximum, so it'd be a third of the second, things will tend to look a little bit smeary, a little kind of blend together a little bit too much. And if you shoot at a shorter shutter speed, so let's say a thousandth of a second, so out of that one thirtieth of a second that that frame is, is uh, that one thirtieth of a second of time that that frame exists for, only one thousandth of a second was actually recorded, what you end up with is very staccato video, very, very stuttered video. And not that it's stuttered like there's a, a, a hold between frames, but the action that's happening in the scene appears very stuttered. So if you had something flying across the scene, uh, you would have, let's say, like a baseball going across the scene, that ball would be stopped. You'd have a frame here, and then a frame here, and then a frame here, as opposed to a slightly smeary frame, a slightly smeary frame, a slightly smeary frame. And the visual effect of that is quite jarring. It's quite, it's unique. The first time I remember actually seeing it in a movie and recognizing what it was, was the movie Gladiator. If you remember that, it's like 2000, I think it was, 2001 maybe. In, in that movie, there is a, a big battle scene in the beginning. And I remember seeing that scene and seeing mud and debris and crap flying everywhere and seeing like this staccato, very, very kind of juddery movement of everything. Um, I didn't understand at the time what that was. I came to understand later that was a very, very high shutter speed. It was measured in shutter angle, 
we're going to get to all that, but it is essentially very high shutter speed. It freezes all that motion. And it can be used for visual effect, right? It's, it works really well when you're seeing an explosion, stuff flying everywhere. It's just a different visual look, and you as the filmmaker can de decide what kind of a look you want, um, and that helps define what your shutter speed is going to be. Now, obviously, other things like light come into play, but if you want to shoot a specific shutter speed, then you light the set to be able to shoot at that shutter speed. That's just, you know, it's filmmaking. You build the set the way you want it to be. Okay, so now we've got shutter speed in the world of filmmaking. We know that ideal shutter speed is half the duration of the, of the frame, the, the half the duration that the frame is in existence for, if you will. If you go higher, you get that staccato motion. If you go slower, you get smearing. And if you go too slow, then you end up blending frames together, which is generally not considered a good thing. Okay, so that is shutter speed. Shutter angle, now how does that play into this? Well, it's actually exactly the same thing. It's just measured in a different way. So let's talk about that. Before we do that, I want to throw up a couple of things. Uh, real quick, I am doing a workshop in India coming up early next year, January 30th to February 9th of 2019. You can learn all about it at photojoseph.com slash India. Tickets for this go on sale tomorrow. That is Saturday, March 26th. That is when those go on sale, and you can finally put your deposit down and hold a seat. We are a minimum of four seats to make the trip a go, maximum of of eight seats to make the trip and go. Uh, hopefully, uh, some of you out there watching live will be able to join me, so head over to photojoseph.com slash India to check that out. Much sooner than that and much closer to home, at least for those of us in North America, is the Out of Chicago Summer Conference coming up in June. That's just a few weeks away. If you want to learn about that, click the link on your screen or go to outofchicago.com slash summer. And to register for that, if you use the code PHOTOJOSEPH, you'll get $50 off registration. That is going to be an awesome conference, a lot of fun. We're going to have, uh, there's a bunch of really, really awesome photographers doing teaching, and then me. And we're all going to be doing all kinds of fun, uh, lots of street photography, education, architecture. It's just, it's all photo and video related. It's going to be cool. So check that thing out. Um, and lastly, if you feel like you've learned something today, I just want to remind you of our value for value model we have on this show. If you feel like you learned something, you feel like you gained value, please consider giving value back. Just go to photojustup.com slash support to learn how to do that. There's Patreon, there's PayPal, there's shopping at the affiliate store, there's lynda.com learning, of which I am an educator on, lots of classes on there. And you can even hire me directly if you want to have a consulting session. Okay, so that is all of that. Now let's get into shutter angle. Okay, so what is shutter angle? Well, shutter angle is a whole different way of measuring it that doesn't actually exist today. In a digital camera, shutter angle is totally irrelevant. It's just a number. The shutter angle thing doesn't exist anymore. This is a, a thing that harkens back to the days of film when we were actually shooting film cameras, but it's something that cinematographers got used to. It's a logical way of thinking, and it makes sense to put that into the digital realm. And we'll explain how to set that up in your camera as well as part of this. But what actually is it? Well, let's first, let's go back to talking about the physical structure of the camera. Again, you've got your light coming through the lens. It is going through a little window and hitting your film plane, hitting the film. So we're talking film now, forget digital. Film is on a reel, right? You've got a big spool of film all wound up. And that reel, is, and we're talking movie film here, not, uh, not 35 millimeter still film. Um, that film has to be moved, physically moved, in front of that window, right? If this is the window, lens, light's coming through here, there's the window. The film has to be moved in front of that so it can be exposed, and then it's moved out, another one's moved into place, and so on. It's just like, actually, on an old DSLR camera where you had the to wind the frame, wind the film. You did this, and a series of sprockets moved that frame, uh, moved that film forward one frame to the next frame so it was ready to go. It's the exact same thing in cinema cameras. It's just that it's happening at 24 frames per second, 24 times per second. This little arm is pulling that film down into place. Okay, so you've got the lens, the light coming through the lens, going through a window, exposing the film. But what about the shutter? We haven't talked about the shutter yet. So something has to control when that light is hitting that film plane and when it is not. Well, if you think of the shutter in the conventional sense that we do today, a bunch of blades that drop out of the way and drop into place, that's fairly new, and it's also fairly complicated, and it's also fairly prone to breaking. If you're doing this 24 times per second, hours and hours a day, days and days, months and months, that thing's going to break. And so long before those type of shutters came out, someone figured out that you could put a spinning disc, literally a piece of metal, a circular piece of metal, spindle in the middle, spinning. And that spinning piece of disc would have a hole in it. The size of that hole determined how long the film was being exposed for. So now we're getting into the angle part of it. You've got a disc. If you cut a moon-shaped hole, that is a 180-degree angle. 180-degree angle means while it's spinning at 24 revolutions per second, it is exposing your film at half of the duration that that film is sitting there in place. 
180 degree shutter equals half of the duration. That is our ideal position. That is where we want it to be to give us that slightly smeary, not too smeary, not too frozen look on our film plan. So that spinning disc spins around in there and exposes the film. I actually have a little animation. I pulled this off of Wikipedia. Um, you can see this going here. It's, you see the little arm. Let's get my mouse here. We go. You see this little arm that is pulling the film down into place and then this disc behind it that is spinning. So it's a hole in it, or effectively half of a disc in this case, that is spinning around, exposing it for half the time, or not exposing it for the other half of the time. If you want a faster shutter speed, if you want the film to be exposed for less time, you have a smaller shutter angle. So you have more metal on the disc and a smaller hole. That smaller hole exposes the film for a shorter period of time, giving you the result of that faster frozen motion as opposed to the longer exposure for the smeary motion. So that's what shutter angle actually is. Okay, so great. Why do we even think about this when it comes to digital? I mean, who cares? We don't need to have shutter angle anymore. Well, there's a really good reason that we still like to think of shutter angle. Remember that 180 degree shutter. It's half of the circle. It is half of the duration that the frame is in place, ready to be exposed. Half of that time is going to be exposed when you're at 180 degree shutter. Now it doesn't matter if I'm shooting 24 frames per second, 25, 30, 60. It doesn't matter what frame per second frame rate I'm shooting at. If I'm shooting at 180 degree angle, I am always shooting at the optimum half duration. So instead of going, oh, I'm in 24p, now I have to go to a 48th of a second, but actually my camera doesn't have a 48th, it actually has a 50th, so that's gonna be close. Or I'm shooting at 30p now, so I gotta set my camera to a 60th of a second, um, which is, you know, where that's close enough. It would be like one over 59.94 if you're gonna get really accurate about it, but yeah, 60th is close enough. Or I'm shooting at 60th of a second, now I gotta go to 120th of a second, my camera might not have 120. You don't have to worry about that. You set it to 180 degree shutter and whatever frame rate you're in, it means that you always have that half duration exposed. Now, one of the caveats here is that when you go from 30p to 60p and you leave the shutter angle at 180 degrees and you leave everything else the same, your aperture and your ISO the same, you now need twice the amount of light because you are exposing for half the amount of time. Right, that's an important consideration. So if you set your camera to shutter angle and you have it at 180p, uh, 180 degrees and you go from 30p to 60p, suddenly your scene gets darker because you're exposing for a shorter period of time. It's the equivalent of going to a higher shutter speed. You just don't have to think about it. So that is one of the reasons that we do this. We set our cameras to 100, uh, 180 degree shutter and then I don't have to worry about it. It's just always right. And I can adjust it if I want to. Just like I would adjust my shutter speed, I adjust the shutter angle to um, expo over or underexpose my shot if I want to. Again, giving us that shorter angle, that faster action, higher shutter speed, or the longer one, whatever you want to do. Um, the other advantage to this is you can do something called synchro scan, which allows you to adjust the shutter angle in extremely, extremely precise increments, one degree increments. And um, I'm going to show you exactly why you'd want to do that in a moment. Assuming that thing is still on, yes it is, I'll show you why you can do that in just a moment. So first, let us go and take a look at how to set up the shutter angle on your GH5 or G, G, GH, yeah, GH, GH5 or GH5S camera. Actually, same thing on GH4. I don't think it was, uh, yeah, same thing. Same thing on GH4. I don't know prior cameras to that. I wasn't working with a GH3 earlier. Um, this is something that's on the GH series cameras, or if you're shooting Canon, Nikon, whatever, if your camera has shutter angle, you're gonna have to find where it is on yours, but there you go. Okay, so let's see here. Let us start off with, uh, let's look through the camera here. Um, right now I'm in shutter speed. So if you look at the lower left corner, you can see these shutter speeds. There's 160th of a second, 200th of a second, and so on. So it, my camera is set to 60p right now, so that would be an ideal exposure of 120th of a second. And you see like here, I don't even have it, right? I got 100th, I got 125th, I don't have 120th of a second. So you're like, well, that's kind of a bummer, right? I can't exactly get the right shutter speed. If I was shooting 30p, then it would 60 and so on and so on. Anyway, so let's change it. Let's go into the menu. And we're going to go to the, you have to be in cinema movie mode, by the way, the creative movie mode, that's the M with the little movie icon next to it. You can't set this in the standard shooting mode, um, which incidentally means if you set your camera to shutter angle and you're in the regular still shooting mode and you push the red record button on the camera, it is going to be recording in shutter speed, the same shutter speed that you had your camera currently set to. So this is specifically about the creative movie mode. Okay, so when you're in creative movie mode, you get this menu here. There we go, look, I can almost point to that. Uh, that's the M with the camera next to it. And on, this is the GH5S, it's gonna be the same place in the GH5. You'll see on page one of two, there's only a couple page, page one of two, we're looking for this one that says SS slash gain operation. That's shutter speed slash gain. 
If I click on that, the first option is the default option. It's seconds and ISO. That's what that means, seconds and ISO. So seconds, fractions of a second, 30th, 60th, 120th of a second, and ISO. That is our way of measuring our sensitivity, ISO. The next option is angle and ISO. So that's angle we've been talking about and the ISO. And the last one is seconds and decibels. That's actually gain. So if you want to expose for gain, that's like an old film. Thing. Forget about that. We don't, it's an old video thing. We don't, we don't care about that for now. What we want is angle and ISO. So now with angle and ISO, now look at the shutter speed. Instead of saying a, um, whatever it was, a 120th of a second or something, it now says 180D, 180 degree shutter. And as I move this down, wrong one, as I move it down, you see it goes 120 degree shutter, 90 degree shutter, 60 degree, and I can take this all the way down to an 11 degree shutter, um, or I can take this all the way up to a 360 degree shutter. And that is the highest it goes, right? It cannot go more than 360 degree shutter. Why not? Because as we've explained, you can't actually expose for longer than that frame is there for. So 360 degree shutter means you are going to be exposing at the maximum possible shutter speed. Again, if you want to force it past, you get out of this, you can go into the manual shutter mode, do like a 15th of a second, but your video is going to look rubbish, so probably don't want to do that. Okay, so that's, that's how you set it in a shutter angle. So once you set it in there, you set it at 180 degrees, set it and forget it, and off you go. But... I said you could set it in really, really precise increments. You're going, that wasn't very precise. It went from 360 down to, uh, what was it? 360, 240, let's bring this back up again, uh, 216 and so on. So there is a way to get more precise. Now, why would you want to get more precise? I mean, it's, it's, the exposure increments are different, uh, are pr pretty dramatic, I should say, but um, you know, maybe you want a more gradual exposure change, but there's a more important reason for that. It's something called synchro scan. So if you've ever shot, if you've ever pointed a camera at a television, an NTSC television, not, not an LCD, but an actual NTSC TV, uh, you saw the big scan lines going by. If you are shooting under uh, uh, fluorescent lights or some non-LED lighting, you will see a flicker show up in your video. And that's because your recording shutter angle is out of sync with the speed at which the lights are flickering. And if you're just dealing with lights, there's calculators you can look at that'll tell you when you're shooting this frame rate um, under these type of lighting, then this is the shutter angle you need to use. But there's another example of where this can go, it can be helpful. And that is shooting an LCD or LED, I guess I'm not sure which one it'd be, um, display. So I've got my, my little VDU Pro here and probably can't see it on this camera right now, but this screen right here, it's, it's all lit up. And I'm gonna put this in front of this camera here. And let me focus on this here. And you can see the scan line going there, right? So if I'm trying to shoot video of this screen, that's, that's gonna be terrible, right? No one wants to watch that going by. By adjusting the shutter angle very, very minutely, I can get the shutter angle in or shutter speed in sync with the scan lines and the scan lines go away. So let's talk about how to do that. So let's go into, let's go into the menu on the camera. And there's, here it's called synchro scans. That's what we're looking for. And I turn this on. And then it comes up with a, it comes up with my shutter angle. And you see now, instead of going from 180 down to 120 or whatever it was, I have individual degree increments to adjust it in. Cool, right? Okay, so let's go back to this view here and start adjusting it. So now again, in the lower left corner, you see 177, 176. I'm going to start bringing this up and watch how that scan line starts to disappear. And eventually I find right around, in this case, for this display, right around 200, somewhere around there. Now I'd have to watch it for a while to see sometimes you, you find what you think is right and then you watch it for a while and then you see a scan line very slowly keep through. You're not quite in sync. You gotta find the right position exactly to be in. Uh, there's no easy formula for this. You just gotta find the right one. And in this case, that is looking pretty good. If I go, if I keep going up, so you see in the, again in the lower left, 206 degree. As I start to go up too high, you see a slight flicker coming back in. So I've gone too far. So I know it's somewhere right around that 200 mark. And so I would spend a little time figuring out exactly what it is. But that is one of the great advantages of shooting shutter angle and being able to very precisely adjust that with the synchro scan adjuster. So that is everything I wanted to tell you. That's that. So if you have questions about this, we are again going to follow us up with a Q&A. So Actually, scratch that, no Q&A today. The Q&A portion, there was hardly anything, so it's not worth putting up. Um, next week's show, Monday is a holiday in the United States, so I will not be doing a show on Monday. Wednesday would be a show like normal. Friday, I'm going to be out of town, so I might end up doing a show on Tuesday and Wednesday or Wednesday and Thursday, or maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I don't know. But uh, Monday, there's no show uh, for sure. So we'll see you sometime next week. Mm -hmm.